expect a full workload for Zeke after only 13 carries in his first game? This is what I would like to do with Dallas. I believe Dallas is in a unique situation, and very, very few times can a team change their characteristics. And because of Zeke, because he missed the camp, and because of the holdout, and he would like to think, yeah, now I'm on my second week of practice, I'm ready for a full load. Well, no, no, you're not. I would take it and live look at the schedule. I'm, I'm, I've been trained by the NFL. I'm going week to week, but I'm in TV now. Yeah. I can look for, I can forecast. Yeah. And the reason why, you don't know Zeke's going to hold out, but also, you don't know that schedule is going to turn out the way it is. You got the Giants, you got Washington, and then you got um, a high school team from Miami. <laughs> so, for me, what I would do, Jenna, is I would work him back gradually because I don't want him to get hurt. I want him to get ready for that next two-game stretch being New Orleans and Green Bay. Yep. So, what I would do is I might have him a few more touches, but I want people to see another 60 to 70 plays of Kellen Moore in that passing game, John Kitna, his impact on Dak as a passer, because I'm just going to tell you, you put enough film out there with guys running wide open and hitting guys down the field, the NFL will adjust. So by the time they need Zeke to be able to go back and grind it out, they would have enough video and the young players, especially Michael Gallup and some of the other players, Randall Cobb's not a young player, but they would have tremendous confidence as you get into the meat of the schedule. So they got a unique opportunity, and I would take advantage of it. After seeing that film last week, seeing the route combinations, I put another two games out there very strong. So, yes, he might touch the ball another three to five times more, but it wouldn't be as physical as I'm used to, and a lot of those might be in the passing game. And I don't often say this, but I almost feel like you were cheating off my paper there, see? Because I agree with you a thousand percent. I can't cheat. I'm Be sitting in the front next to the teacher. I'm the okay. teacher's pet. Okay, I no problem. I ain't looking on nobody's the, paper. Because it does have to do with the schedule. If this were, the, if they had weeks four and five and weeks two and three, if it was New Orleans, Green Bay, these next two games, instead of Washington, Miami, my answer would likely be different. Because then I, I don't think Dallas's best offense, even, no matter how well Dak plays, is one where Zeke touches the ball 13 to 17 times. I think their best offense is one where Zeke touches the ball 20 to 25 times because he is still, week one notwithstanding, their best player. But what is best for the Cowboys in a very winnable road game is for Dak and the passing game to try to continue this momentum, to try mm -hmm. to continue feeling great about themselves. And you mentioned Kellen Moore, and obviously Kellen Moore had some really nice adjustments. They did a lot more pre-snap motion. They did a lot more play action week one than they were doing last year. But if you go back and watch the big plays, a lot of those plays had no play action. A lot of those plays had no window dressing pre-snap. Those big plays, the biggest of them were Dak Prescott dropping back and firing dimes to not necessarily even wide open receivers. There was one play where there was a clear miscommunication, the tight end touchdown to Jarwin, where Ogletree and someone else, clearly somebody didn't do their job, and he was wide open. But it was Dak Prescott with precision and accuracy with the game on his shoulders. So if you can duplicate that, you obviously, the number one goal is to win, but if you can have you know, your cake and eat it too, to use a cliche, if you can win winning that way, where Dak again continues this momentum, where Zeke can ease himself into it, because holdout notwithstanding, there was one thing during the holdout Jerry Jones said that was accurate. We do want Zeke peaking at the end of the season. We don't want to overuse Zeke at the beginning of the season to where he is worn out by the end of the season if they are going to be a playoff team. So for all those reasons, I agree wholeheartedly with Chris. It, it, see if Dak can do it again and see if by the time you get to Saints Packers, if when they're game planning for you, you're like, geez, can we put eight in the box? Can we can we defend the Cowboys the way we have the last couple years? Yeah, and just because Zeke wants a heavier workload doesn't mean Kellen Moore is going to game plan a larger workload for Ezekiel Elliott. But, but Nick, you said something interesting. If games four and five were games one and two, maybe this decision would be different. Also, had the Cowboys lost to the Giants, maybe things would be different and there'd be more pressure to get him in. But they have the luxury and the mm -hmm. comfort now of having seen what Dak Prescott could do in an offense that was able to succeed without relying too heavily on the run game. Yeah, run it back. Try to do that again and then ease him in. And let's not forget, Kellen Moore's only been in one NFL game calling plays. Let's let him get some reps. 
I'm not as concerned about Zeke and his ability to be effective as I am about Kellen Moore when we get in highly contested games, when he's calling plays against Sean Payton. Man, I mean, that's a huge advantage to the New Orleans Saints. But as we grow throughout the season, and I know through talking to a, 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 a one of Dallas staff members, they were pleasantly surprised at the rhythm for which Kellen Moore was able to call play. So, man, these next two games are very important, not only for their young quarterback, but even a, young, even a younger coordinator. Nick. And the one other thing that happened in week one that we should mention that I feel like has gone unmentioned throughout the weeks up to this point was Travis Frederick's return showed up. It showed up on the stat yeah. sheet, yeah, and it showed up player. on film. Of all the games played on Sunday, no quarterback was pressured less as a percentage than Dak Prescott. When you're pressured less than 10% of your dropbacks, you are going to have high-level success, particularly with the receiving core working the way it did. And so it, Tyron Smith played well, that entire offensive line, but you could see they got their all-pro center back for the first time in over a year with Travis Frederick in week one. But in watching week number one, be careful. Jay Gruden had Washington prepared. They had Philly on the, the road. road. Jenna was texting people. There go Casey. There go Casey. No, I Case Keenan. That's her guy. <laughs> there go Casey. I, did. I said, Jenna, he good for I half know, a I season or half a game. I yeah. took it back. <laughs> yeah. I took it you back. must have been conflicted. You had your Super Bowl I pick know. on one side. I know. And Case Keenum NFL Keenum crush on the, on the other. No, but it's true. Case Keenum and, and Washington did have Philly a little nervous there in the early half of that game. And they might be able to do the same for the Cowboys. Pressure on them to get out to a Right. And the start. reason why I mentioned that is you don't want to take teams for granted. As they say, oh, you know something? It's, it's like, we'll work Zeke in there slowly. Or, you know something? No. You need to know this is a divisional game. Right. You get 2-0 and o in your division. You're on the road. It's the first time this team is going on the road. The formula to being successful is I need to win at least half of my road games. I go 7-1. and one. At home, and you're 11 and five, and, and you're looking good. So for me, it becomes important in this rare three-game window, developing my passing game, creating film out there that the NFL realizes that oh, Dallas is throwing the ball a lot like they had done the previous nine games, Nick. Because we yep. can't forget how effective Dak and Amari were the second half of the season. And real quick, you mentioned Dallas going on the road for the first time. The flip side of that is home opener for Washington. So a little extra juice for Washington in that regard after being on the road in week one, coming home and seeing what they can do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.